finally, a source of raw, real, and honest information on healthcare issues that matter most. Welcome to BS Free MD. From the latest medical information to how to stay sane as a doctor or a patient, no subject is taboo, no BS is allowed. Now, let's welcome your hosts, Doctors May and Tim Heinmarsh. We're back, and this is our 100th episode, which we are just delighted because we actually. Where's not a lot of podcasts make it to a hundred? Where's the streamers, the rockets, the balloons? That's right, the rockets, red glare, the have... bombs bursting in air. Gave proof okay. through the night that our podcast <laughs> so stop. is still there. Yes, uh, we are. Now I'm, are... I'm not sure if it, you're you're going to do like the night before Christmas or no. go into the uh, Star Spangled Banner. But for the sake Christmas. of the listeners. Um, let's talk about the podcast. Yeah, we are thrilled. And we, first of all, are very thankful, thankful to our listeners that have, uh, uh, been there and have continued to grow. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about that too. We have enjoyed this and, um, we immensely, it, it's just, I, you're speechless. I, I love this. You're speechless. First off, it's just because you're, you're so you're unbelievably say. smoking hot today. Oh my gosh! I thought I'd dress that up. You've rented me. I thought I'd dress up for the occasion. Well, and, and actually, you know, come re- in a respectable outfit. But I see you brought Alice Cooper with you, so my Alice that's Cooper. Great. I'm doing my. Um, I'm channeling my Fetterman. All of that except the, uh, you know, stroke. Perfect. So I'll try. Well, to I hope you. I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. Turns into a week, basically. We did. We had a great time. I think Tim won the Iron Man contest since the feedback we got from everybody from the social media post. And someone that sent us the actual Google pronunciation in what British, American, and Canadian was Iron. So thanks for shaming me. I do have one other friend that says it the way I do. So I'll stick. I'm sticking by that. But anyway, we had a great time um, in Arizona watching our son do the Iron Man and completing it. And it was like. And completing it in a very good time, yeah. especially for his first race. It was uh, incredibly moving to witness. Um, really something. I mean, two point for those of that are rookies with regards to Iron Man triathlons, 2.4 miles of swimming. And that was in quite choppy water. That was 60 degrees because it was in Arizona. There's a lot of hypothermia going on. It's very after cold that. in the morning, which is when they start. And um, a lot of skinny w- broads like me were not looking so good at the end, needing medical therapy. At the end of the swim. Yeah. And then 112 miles of cycling, um, which you might as well Uphill just. both ways. <laughs> I, th- I, think, I think bending <laughs> me over wind. and smacking me on the rear with a bat would be less painful than 112 miles of cycling. The funniest part about the cycling. I have to just jump in and say is that so our son decided to wear black and white it has a black bike black shoes I think black helmet or white no white helmet anyway how many people were wearing black and white and our son looks like every other apparently straight white 23 year old average British male and so we kept wanting to Everyone. cheer him every time he came on the loop and we'd be like I think that's him I think that's him and that's not him it was pretty funny. You and then, to, of course, you see them, and then, boom, they're gone because he's, you know, averaged 18 miles an hour for 112 miles. And then you get rewarded when you finish the bike uh, with the lovely experience of running a marathon, um, like a real one, like 26.2 miles. Just a little evening jog. And what was remark? There's a anyway. lot of remarkable things. But before we get to all this other detail and we run down every single rabbit hole there is. Um, I want to give another shout out to uh, Magic Mind, the world's first productivity drink. We talked about it last week with its uh, nootropics and adaptogens made from actual mushrooms, not the magic mushrooms. <laughs> but, well, why is it called Magic Mind? Well, then? because it, it is does co- it's, the it magic has a connotation of some yeah, psychotropic well, stuff going on. But but the thing that's cool about it is the kind of energy boost slash focus without the caffeine jitters because i've always kind of that's my thing i could i i i could drink tons of coffee but i can't ultimately because i like the mental focus part of it there's lots of studies on caffeine doing that but i get a you know my stomach gets upset it's etc cetera, etc cetera. not so with uh magic mind i i usually take that with 
coffee in the morning, oh get gosh. super focused, read for an hour or two, With work out. Coffee. Oh yeah. Yeah, it works good. And you're zen. Um, usually I hold off on that. Oh boy, you're gonna really I'm turning you in turning on this in. episode. Every single bad habit I have. Um well not every single one. We're not going through those. Yeah, okay, yeah. Talk that would through. be a whole other episode. That's episode 101. <laughs> um, but one thing we failed to mention about Magic uh, Mind last week is they have a uh, discount code for our BS Free MD listeners, BS Free 20. And in honor of the 100th episode, they have also um, reached out and said that they're going to have their own contest. So if any of our listeners use that BS Free 20, mm-hmm. Uh, what, what do they co- get? Coupon. They, they get, get entered to win another fifteen energy shots or focus shots. They're like, you know, so it's, is, is the BS free twenty? Is it an entry or is it a discount? It's a discount, twenty percent discount. And if you do that, they're going to enter you in for another another fifteen. Um, I don't want to say doses because it sounds oh, like so you so you get a discount as well as be entered in to win some more. Correct. And where do they go? To find their product. It's a magicmind.co. Let me double check that so that I'm not in, you know, I'm not doing something wrong. Awesome. I must say and we will have that all in the show Tim notes really, so that everything really likes. I haven't given it a good try, so I can't comment, mostly because I'm very freakish about things that change my sense of alertness. And I don't like to experiment with things. Like a steering wheel where when you get in front of a steering wheel and it's night, it just puts you to sleep and completely alters your change of alertness. That's the dark. So for the it's last the steering wheel, 35 the years of us being together or whatever it is, I have to drive every single time at night because otherwise we're dead. No. Is that listen, what you mean? Now, if you would listen to the book, Why We Sleep, you would know that when the lights go out, my melatonin goes up and it's time for me to go to sleep. But everything to do with the darkness and not the steering wheel. Yeah, but when we're driving across Canada from Edmonton to Saskatoon in the middle of the night, in the middle of winter, in the middle of the night, you just you said can it. read all you want about why we sleep, and really, what it becomes is why we die. Well, no, you're not supposed to drive at night if you're tired. Dark <sighs> makes me tired. Well, That's all I have get to say. used to the magic mind, and maybe you would be able to drive. Maybe at I night, need some so. magic mind at night if I'm driving. There you go. I prefer Snickers bars and a double latte, but. If you can't tolerate caffeine, you don't like coffee, then Magic Mind really does give you that heightened alertness without the stimulation and potential side effects. So give it a try. Check, and I just like saying their- nootropics and <laughs> adaptogens. <clears throat> yes. So that's fun. And it, it's uh, magicmind.co. Yes. And don't forget, BS Free 20 at checkout. BS free 20. I love it. 20. Oh, we can have a debate on how to say 20. <laughs> In my laboratory with my tomatoes. Oh, my. All right. And my aluminum cans. A 20 is just 20. So is this? Not 20. So, so 20. is an aluminum can in Britain a can or is it a tin? Um, Even though it's aluminum. Not aluminium. That's how they say it. I guess they spell it different. They must. I have to check that out. Aluminium. Anyway, on with the show forward. Uh, What are you thankful for this week? Have you pondered on the gratitude? Well, as usual, I'm thankful that I'm not nearly as big of a dick as the people that cut me off in traffic. Hmm. Baby steps of gratitude are important. Um, I like that. Yeah. Baby steps. No, I actually started doing that. And, I, you know, the thing I did find just in the brief time is a second, like, you know, the, the, the kind of ritual, the gratitude people that have studied this tell you to do is to pick three things. And the second, and I go, I sit down and I'm like, you know, you're bummed out or something. And you, you and then you force yourself. Okay. What's three things I've thought before. I find that by the time I get to the third thing, there's a whole bunch more that I, I want to write down. Mm-hmm. So it really is just, you know, what you focus on, you become. Yeah. Or or more specifically, what you focus on, you do. And what you do, you become. I think that's really the, um, that's the philosophy I ascribe to. That is an entire debate on whether it's thinking or doing, but ultimately doing is what matters. Well, focusing on positivity. 
does lift spirits <clears throat> like we talked about last week. So I want to focus on all the fun, positive stuff from the last 100 episodes. It's hard, so hard to believe we started this journey off two, it's almost two years ago. And last year, at the end of the year, we did an end of the year wrap up to go over our favorites as well as the audience favorite episode so that people who are new listeners could maybe get some clues and hints on some shows that they missed out on and weren't sure about listening to. And so we decided to do that this year for a hundredth anniversary celebration instead of December 31st episode, uh, because we have a lot more new listeners by the looks of the stats. There's a lot of people listening to the more current episodes in the last three months. And so there's a bunch of that are really awesome. that We think you should go back and check out from the beginning. You said hundredth anniversary, not hundredth episode anniversary. Did I say hundredth? Well, yeah. it's a hundredth so, episode. So, so we've only been married just over <laughs> 30 years. So I'm assuming it feels like a hundred years, but it's actually it 30. It is a hundredth episode anniversary. So sort of, there's it? a 33.3% okay. increase in what it feels like to be married as long as we have, right? Is that what you're saying? That's what I hear. That's what I'm hearing. Are we going to do the speaker listener technique of marriage counseling? <laughs> no, we yeah. are not. We we are not. So I'll, if you, I'll take if your you, mic away. If you know what that is, you have like I'll take this, your mic away instead this, of the talking stick. We went to the, <laughs> we went to this marriage thing oh. like a million years ago. It was 25 years ago, and they had like this kind of like sticker you could stick onto your um, refrigerator that you know gave you the rules of engagement for talking about you know conf confronting your spouse and the whole concept was when the person was holding the the sticker then they were speaking and the other person couldn't speak until they had it so that you know they had to relinquish didn't it didn't they actually give us some kind of stupid actual stick while we were doing well the... yeah but they called it the talking stick but it was this there was a this stick. magnet right well that was okay. to take home well so it, so if you ever have looked at like fridge magnets that are about four by four inches, they're actually quite substantial. So we're practicing this technique, right? 25 years ago, we're practicing this technique of speaker listener. And honestly, it was so unbelievably frustrating. After about seven and a half minutes, we were almost trying to stab each other with the edge no, of I this fridge magnet. we threw it at each other. It's like, if I throw that hard enough at her head, it might actually stick into her skull. <laughs> That's nice. Well, and we said, and then we looked really... at each other and we start laughing. We go, this does not work for us because someone was a really good listener and someone was a really good talker. And uh, the reciprocation wasn't there. So when I should have been talking, I and then you had to, I wouldn't repeat, say then you had to repeat read back, my, read my mind and you should have shut up you, when you should. Well, right. And then you had to repeat back what the other yeah. person was saying. Right. So it's like, well, you know, when you come home late and you're really drunk and you smell like other women, that makes me upset. And oh, well, what I hear you saying is, <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> what what do you hear me saying? Um, you would wah, prefer wah, 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 from Charlie Brown. Um, what I hear you saying is, you think I'm a dick. <laughs> well, <gasps> what I said was, you know, <laughs> and it's just like it, just... it has some. It had really some good elements and for people that don't know how to communicate very well it's a starting place but i guess we I communicated think, okay i think we had a talking stick that we ended up becoming like a punching bag or something at the end no, we said if we had to do the talking stick every time there was any issue it would be the talking bat <laughs> yeah put on the gloves oh uh, what i hear you I saying they is... had those two didn't wasn't there a thing where you're supposed to actually put on those inflatable boxing gloves well that's the stupidest idea I've ever seen in my life I mean, think of some of our friends, you know, married to like a guy that's like 235 pounds and six, six married to someone that's five foot one. Yes. That's 92 pounds. Yeah. That's a fair fight. It's like even taking if, a foot to the cat. That's e just really not fair. E even if they're, a, you know, wow, like inflatable. I want to take out my, all my aggression. I, no, you're, you don't. Cause that's idiotic. <laughs> oh, all right. Moving on with the show. What was your favorite out of the top 100, Tim? Do you have one? Well, the problem is, is they're all so segmentally different. If like one, we had if just one pops in your head. We had COVID. I know. Don't segment. Them. We had we had fitness. Right. I'm going to get to that. But is there one? Well, think about it, because well, as I was looking through all the different groups and I wrote down some different 
one categories that were my favorites. I have to say, as soon as I looked this up, it just makes me laugh and giggle every time. And it was uh, number 13. We called the, um, ah, what is the name of it? Anyway, was I call it the COVID awards. No, I call this the biggest surprise. It's the launch party announcement that we did. Oh, that was really something on April 1st, 20. That was where we, we had convinced people like we had convinced people that are like friends, like really good friends of ours for decades that not only were we going to become astronauts, which would tell you that NASA has lost their ever loving mind, but that because we were married, we were not just going to be astronauts. We were going to be going to the moon and on the way to the moon because we were married and they wanted to study sex in space, in weightlessness, that they were going to have us use a weightless sex capsule. And people like, you know, I thought, OK, by the time we get to the because uh, it got more I ridiculous. Went, I think it went like 12, 10 to 12 months later. I was still getting approached by people that would said, that's really exciting about your when are you guys going and i'm like what are you talking about and they still believed that it well it just got more and more ridiculous and then when we got I, we thought okay by the time we get to the weightless sex capsule like there's no there's no question that people are going to go yeah okay it's Especially april because 1st. The acronym for it was the piss capsule the piss capsule physicians in space study it was no physical re- intimacy in space or something like that was the piss. Yeah, I can't. I have to. I'd have to go back and listen to that part again. What made it so funny was that the backstory information was all truths that had happened to us, people we know, where our son is going to school, all the trips we had made to visit him, a lot of the people we know in the uh, what do you call space industry, etc. And it was just also plausible that even our some of our best friends. Believed well, it. the thing is, though, if you watched if you watched the documentary about Elon Musk sending four regular people into space, mm-hmm. I mean, then there's no question we could go into space because we were, you know, could easily pass the fitness stuff that they did. All, all of all of the, you know, the the, you know, the tests that they did, all of the things that like, would not be an, no, would not, not be an issue. Dramamine and Zofran in the world for me. <laughs> when you get me, you get a little motion. I sitting. think I get a lot motion. But sitting. when you puke, it's easy to to clean up because it just is a weightless ball. I think we puke. talked about that on the episode. I was like literally tie the barf bag onto my face, and that we did that. But that was that was super funny, and I think the reason I like it so much was because it was April first. I think our kids were the only two to figure it out right away. Well, and we our had- financial advisor, he he goes. He, he listened to like two seconds yeah. and he goes, it's April 1st. It's all horseshit. Exactly. <laughs> so, so that, that was means the, you have a good financial that the, advisor. That was the gift that see. kept on giving that episode because it went on forever. So episode like herpes, epi- and the, like herpes, the gift that keeps on giving. There you go. Well, and aptly numbered number 13, because I think that was funny. Um, Let's talk about any other favorite episodes, just generically that pop out in your mind. Here's mine while you think of yours. So number 52, it, we called it eat shit and live with Dr. Sabine Hazen. I, that's a real popular episode and it was at the end of last year. And it's still one of my favorites because I learned so much about the gut microbiome and the impact on health. I knew, a, you know, a bit of, uh, of, yeah, as I've been reading, but not as much in depth as what she described in the big role, all the research that they've been doing. And I really found that one fascinating. Yeah. You know, like just off the top of my head, obviously the two fanboy episodes for me were pretty significant. You know, Steve Torrance from Torrance Racing, he comes and talks to, you know, these two dopey country doctors four days after he wins his fourth, fourth NHRA top fuel dragster championship. But, but what struck me about that episode was just how unbelievably honest he was with what he had gone through medically mm-hmm, and how mm-hmm. unbelievably positive he was. There, there was really three things. You know, this guy's tougher, like, tougher than you would ever imagine. Um, driving those cars is much more difficult than anyone can comprehend unless you've, you've done it or at least you figured out the physics. You just slam your... your- your pedal to the metal and go. well when you go zero to 60 in 0.8 seconds uh 
shit gets real in a big fat hurry. How come that feels like what we're, we do in the car when I'm with you? Yeah, but it's not. Um, <laughs> and, and he was very, but, but you know, the, the other thing that struck, the three things struck me about that interview. One was how honest he was, which was really, really fun. Um, you know, two, just how down to earth the guy is. Like, is this like a normal guy? And three, to be a champion, you got to really hate losing. And I've heard that over and over and over again. And I think that that's really, you know, how does that, you know, dovetail into medical stuff we talk about? Well, I think it, 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 it dovetails wonderfully because with the diet and exercise episodes that we've had, what you start to realize, if you're going to be a champion at, you know, changing your body, at losing weight, at getting healthy or whatever, you have to hate losing. In other words, once you achieve a goal and you lose the 20 pounds or you, you know, whatever, your goal is then you move into maintenance and maintenance means you don't want to go back and you got to hate going back right well more than you liked going forward and i and i see that that is the champion mentality it it's kind of negative in a way but i think that's what it takes i really do i believe pick your pain and what you value more you know i mean my own personal journey in the last year i i think i've I now I'm I fear failure way more than I was ever motivated by potential success. There's no question of that. Well, along those lines, I chose as another favorite of mine, number 63 that we called fear is no excuse. That's the one with Eddie Braun, who is a stuntman. He recreated the evil Knievel stunt and flew over the snake, snake river Canyon, snake river Canyon. And the, uh, what do you want to call it? biography the movie yeah stuntman on disney plus is amazing it's on disney plus and remarkably eddie does not wear a dress sorry that was just a little woke throw throw out there for you. <laughs> i was like what are you talking about all i was thinking of is dwayne the rock johnson sponsor is, yeah he, he funded it yeah uh an amazing movie the guy is so humble so kind and it was so it, it gives it me it literally about... gives me chills thinking about this so here's this guy right he's got 43 years of stunt experience he's still crashing cars if you follow him on instagram it's crash for cash and and uh you know he's in his 60s now right so so he spends this entire you know several years um going to the son of the engineer who originally built the, the steam-powered rocket sky cycle OK, they build the sky cycle. They start testing it. They do all this stuff. He goes, he gets funding. Fox is, is going to pay for this. It's going to be this massive thing. He's going to make a little bit of money. The 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 stunt's going to get funded. It's it's fantastic. They pull out because they think he's going to die. <laughs> that's why they pull. They don't pull out because they, having, they think it's going to be faith. lame. They pull out because they think he's going to die. So he's so now he has no funding. So he self funds this thing that could potentially kill him. OK, so he gets he you know, he he goes and he does it. He tells his family. You can't come and watch because if this fails, I don't want the last thing you see is like me just being this, you know, mist over the Snake River. So, of course, he does it and he succeeds and he goes back to um where he manhattan beach in california where he lives and like three days later he's back in manhattan beach and he's mowing his lawn i know it's very like people are driving by his house it's like hi eddie what up no nothing i'm just mowing my lawn just like nothing had happened he could (laughs) have went to the moon and back same thing yeah really great inspirational story and some crazy uh tales in there from him as well just about what what number what number is that one that is number 63. Yes. So dial on back and check that one out. Another one that I really enjoyed doing, and I know our listeners did, was number 68 called Hormone Secrets with Dr. Robert Yoho. He has a book out. He was prescribing uh, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy to patients for years, and we got so many requests over the last couple of years while we're doing the podcast for information on hormones and menopause, which I'd still like to get more in depth in, but that episode people really liked. And I liked it as well because it really helped even us sort of hone what we know about hormone replacement in the 
what later years of life, what's safe, not safe, how to kind of mix things up. So it was really encouraging. That was a fun episode. Yeah, it was, that was really great. I mean, if I can get to the theme of, you know, not just individual episodes, but what, what, the, like the the single up, ep- you know. Then there's all the COVID episodes. Well, there's all that. Yes, I I was just gonna say, and I'm I'm ripping off my top five. So the other two was number seventy seven. We called gender the gender identity, or the history of gender identity. When we had Dr. Miriam Grossman on, who was in doc in uh, the documentary What Is a Woman, p- uh, produced by Matt Walsh, and that was fascinating to go through the whole history of where gender originated and what's happening now with the big trans movement, especially to the giant rise in females uh, tra- wanting to transition. So that was a real eye-opening episode as well. And then number five would be, it's a tie, kind of a, it's a sh- schmear of three episodes together. Number 10, number 11, um, I forget what the other one is, but it's fentanyl ink that we did with Ben Westhoff. It's way at the beginning. Go back and check out those ones. He is a journalist who posed as a drug dealer, went to China and infiltrated a fentanyl lab and wrote a book. That's amazing. He tells the story of these two episodes of meeting these people and going to these drug labs and I was just sweating, even though I know he's alive. I was sweating because I was thinking, they're going to get him and they're going to kill him. What's going to happen? It's a fascinating story. And his book's really good. And that ties in with the opioid crisis uh, coverage that we did, as well as the personal story with our friends, the Reisters, who lost their son to an accidental fentanyl overdose, which was very touching for them to come on and tell their story. So those were kind of a pile that I lumped together. Yes. Then we did a bunch of segments and we haven't done any lately. We called the doctor as patient. Those have been fun. I think because it was presenting a little different point of view when the doctor is the patient, what they experience from a perspective and how it's really changed, how they take care of patients or see things through different eyes. And there's a couple of really good episodes, especially ironically that we did with Dr. Rima Batrock called when the oncologist gets cancer so here she is a young oncologist who gets diagnosed with breast cancer the very thing that she treats and it was just a fluke thing and that's a uh an amazing episode i didn't write down the number on that so you'll have to flip back dr marcy larson who's a pediatrician tells her story of how her and her husband who's also a physician lost a son in this horrific car accident the whole family was in and the difficulty that she went through even trying to return to work as a pediatrician and looking at kids and just the grieving process and she's gone on to create a podcast out of that to help other people you, you know that really that episode moving if you i would encourage anybody if you Let me look and see if what you have is. a friend or family member that has experienced a significant loss and you want insights in kind of what works and what doesn't work as far as comforting somebody that has is grieving a very significant loss listen to that because you know we had gone through a lot of significant losses in the last couple years and listening to her articulate this because she started her own podcast where she interviews parents that have lost children which is you know the most horrific loss you can imagine and her insights were so unbelievably helpful. Yes. Um, and Especially... actually changed, it immediately changed how I approach people with loss. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the thing that comes to mind is she said, you know, no one wanted to mention my son's name because they thought I would just blow up and start crying when I came back to work. And, and, and in reality, the only thing I wanted to talk about was my son because I miss him and love him. And I'm like, dude, that is really true and super heavy. Yeah. Whereas, you know, you come back and it's like you got rabies. Nobody wants to be around you because they're so scared of what they're going to say and how they're going to interact. And right. um, and really, I mean, it's just, you know, I don't understand, but I'm here. And if you want to talk, great. And, you know, like it, it's just it, it, it really it was so eye opening and so helpful. That was number 28. And she has. A website called Andy's Mom, A N D Y S 
mom.com on you know, online. Al- always Andy's and mom. Always is Andy's her, mom. Her is, socials. Yeah, is the uh, Instagram podcast too. Yeah. No, really, really heavy stuff. I mean, <laughs> we went from um, the piss capsule in the spaceship to talking about significant loss because hey it's real life man that's what you got to do mm-hmm. there's some other great ones too the doctor's patient you know we had uh martha tettenborn who's actually not a doctor but a nurse who was diagnosed with ovarian cancer and... uh no registered dietitian oh yes my An bad thanks for, thanks for correcting me who talks about how she really changed and impacted her treatment course and recovery and outcome by she calls hacking chemo and changing her diet and she has gone on to uh, write a book about it counsel others that was really kind of uh inspirational too we did a lot on diet and exercise this last year if you've been following us which has really changed our uh how, i guess how we look at ourselves and has impacted our fitness plan but of course covid always comes back to the C word. It's been the ever popular topic amongst our listeners. And I'm just going to say, I'm going to tell you as the listeners, what the biggest downloads have been. And of course, number number one and two are one and two are all Dr. Peter McCullough. Um, The highest ranked one is the latest that we did in September of this year. I think probably because we have more listeners now, but also number 18 when he was on talking about early COVID treatment. And the number third ranked episode we did is number 19, sinking the COVID needle or not. Of course, number four. Which is interesting. Okay. Because this is just to, to, to highlight that. What we thought when we did that episode and what we think now are entirely mm-hmm. different things. And that's because we believe in science, which means as data accrues, you change your opinion. Not you triple or quadruple down on your opinion. You change your opinion if the data changes. Absolutely. Right. So, for instance, in our marriage, May has completely changed her opinion about me. I was supposed to be the knight in shining armor. And now I'm, you know, the slightly less rotund, funny person that actually cares about her. So, you know, it might be a loss. It might be a win. But your opinions do change. So I went from Cinderella to... Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, all in one. Package. All one. You get sleepy. <laughs> you get and... snorry. You get snotty. I we. I, hey, I even get dark. You do, and you get flexy. Now you get flexy. Flexy. Flexy the dwarf. Yes. I don't even want to know what flexy that is. is. I don't sexy. even want to know. <laughs> flexy. Okay, number seventy-one episode. Number seventy-one was the Pfizer study documents uncovered. That was a big one. That. Oh, Oh, Sasha, oh, Sasha Latipova, yes, talked about the real uh, FOIA documents and what they what they meant. You know, but it, but it, you know, it's interesting because if we go through all the COVID stuff, the thing that actually really changed my thinking the most was Harvey Risch. There wasn't any question about that because mm-hmm. you know Harvey's a physician, mm-hmm. he's an epidemiologist, he taught epidemiology at Yale, so I guess he's smart, right? You know, and. What, what really blew my mind, because, you know, we're sitting here, we're trained as doctors, randomized control trials are the standard. They're the highest standard. Every, and he just sat there and he just looks at us and he goes, you can make a randomized control trial, say whatever you want, if you, if you construct it correctly and you, you know, kind of write the reports correctly. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, exactly what I said. And then he says, we don't ever you can get color the, da- the study. And well, put the rose cl- colored glasses on, however you want to. But here's sway what I didn't it. understand. And no doctor, I think very few, not no, but very few doctors understand is the actual hard data that they use to compile these reports or studies that then go to peer review and are peer reviewed and published in medical journals. The peer reviewers do not have the hard data. They do not have the raw data. They have the collated data that the study producers give them. The people that produce the studies overwhelmingly in the, in the entire world, not just the United States, are drug companies whose mission in life is to make as much money and sell as many pharmaceuticals as possible. No. That is really? a major problem. 
And I was like, you know, it's easy to crap on big pharma and all that. And, you know, I get it. Yeah, they're corrupt, blah, blah, blah. Pfizer paid a bunch of fines, you know, back 20 years, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, whatever it was. But but then when he, go, he goes, no, no, when they peer review this, they're just taking industry data that's been collated by industry and giving an opinion about it. And I was like, what? Yeah. And then when you talk to Sasha about it, and she's like, oh, yeah, of course, because she gets the COVID, the COVID data, right? And looks at the safety studies and all this. And she said, what did she say? There was either 70 or 90,000 pages of Pfizer information that they collected for the COVID vaccine. And when that article came out in November of 2020, I remember I looked at it. And the second I looked at it, and I'm just like the dopey country doctor on vacation in Florida. I look at it and I go, May, the incidence of COVID in this is super low. Like the numbers are like, you know, there's like 200 people that got COVID out of 43,000 or whatever it was, Mm -hmm. 260. I said, they can't say anything about this because the power of the study is too low. Yes, it's statistically significant because the differences are so huge, but the absolute reduction compared to the relative risk reduction is nothing. And they said it's 95% effective. I go, that doesn't make sense to me. I got to talk to somebody because I don't get it. So what you're saying is you didn't even need to have Sasha interpret that for you. That part. But I I wasn't even (laughs) trusting myself. Uh, I Seriously, I wasn't even trusting myself because everywhere you go, people are like, well, it's 95% effective. It's 95% effective. No, it's 95% effective. And and you sit and you go, and, and then and then people didn't even question what they were testing for, which was symptomatic disease. It wasn't serious illness, it wasn't hospitalization, it wasn't transmission, it was a whether sniffle, you got the sniffles or not. Right, right. And, and then and that's written out right there. And no one, like everyone was so completely jacked and excited for the vaccine to work and for all of the horseshit that went on with, you know, masking and social distancing to be over. That it was like, everyone was like, I have to believe that this is is exactly what they're telling me. That's, yeah. So that I mean, episode is wild. That episode's number 71. Hard to believe it was back in May. That we did that one, but highly, highly listened to. And she's really, really good at she explaining makes it, it. Makes it very easy, yes, to understand for any. And she's person. got a really cool kind of, you know, um, y- Ukrainian or Russian accent, so it makes her sound smarter. There you go. Um, I would say my a couple of my favorites out of the COVID themes. Uh, well, it was such a pleasure getting to meet and interview with Dr. Rish and Paul Alexander, of course, Dr. Peter McCullough, but the inspiration from other people that came out of the COVID era. So for instance, what Ryan Heath did, who's an attorney out of Arizona, he started the Gavel Project and came on our show is it three times now. Um, but he came in on number uh, 56 and talked about what we, COVID and the law and what was happening and how he basically went out to California to try to defend these poor kids that were being affected by the lockdowns there and the movement that went forward from that. I found that so inspirational. I know that our listeners did too, because it was one of the top ones. And then number 62, the episode called Staten Island Rhino Hunter. (laughs) That was one of the funniest episodes. We have to have him on again. We have to have him on again. Such a great storyteller. And this guy, Worked in a hospital in in, uh, an in radiology. Tech. Radiology yeah. technician. And <laughs> what happened to him, because he didn't want to comply with the mandatory vaccines and just kept putting it off and saying no, got him, uh, a long story short, he ended up running for uh, Congress. He, Congress. He, yeah, well, he ran in New York. He, he ran in the Staten Republican uh, primary against Nicole uh, Maliotakis. And, you know, Nicole won and eventually. So went he back goes Congress, from but... taking x rays into politics just because the whole COVID mandates and him standing up for what he believed in. And he became this by default sort of leader of the pack when no one else would stand up. But he's such a great storyteller and it's super hilarious just to 
to listen to him tell it. We, that, we, that was we really have fun. to have him on again because it, it's yeah, just... we'll have to catch up and see what he's doing. Yeah. No, I follow him on Instagram and he's still he's still doing kind of the freedom movement stuff. I'm not sure if he's in radio still, but he's just John Matlin, you you demand. It was it was great. And we met so many other people like Marnie Lynn, who has started the Patriot Impact website because she got fed up with lockdowns and how it was affecting people in her family at their jobs, etc. cetera. Um, trying to think of something else of any other ones that pop into my head. Well, at you the know, time. but yeah. And then it's it just, you know, look, if we're going to talk COVID and we're going to talk courage and we're going to talk happy warrior rather than pissed off cranky warrior like me, then the, the, the absolute King and queen of that are, are the mill homes. Yes. Um, Dr. Kurt, and Kimberly Milhone, who were practicing, well, they, they practice all over, but how they really got, I wouldn't say pigeonholed, but they were standing up for people trying to do the right thing, treating them when they were sick with COVID. We know how that ends poorly. And they really got ostracized. And did he actually lose his license? For no, that? no, he didn't. He didn't. He, uh, well, what happened was he got they, put they before have, the he's, medical board. He's, I mean, again, some of these people <laughs> you talk to them, and it's like, man, am I an underachiever? I got to stop watching TV. But anyways, um, so he has, he is a pediatric cardiologist and a pastor, and his primary employment is pastoring, a, at least was pastoring a church in Hawaii, and um, they had a like a soup kitchen homeless. Uh, ministry and he started treating these sick homeless people with ivermectin because you know he did the ivermectin looked at the data and he's like hey it's it, it's really safe and you know if it does anything great and then he got interviewed on a podcast in hawaii about that and the hawaiian board of medical examiners went after his license and he's like well what do you mean like you know you know so he had to defend himself against that and he goes, you know, in that interview, he goes through all of the details of what that yeah. entailed and how ridiculous it was and how they wouldn't send him any information, et cetera, et cetera. But in the meantime, in the meantime, they travel back and forth to the mainland and usually f do fill in uh, work in Texas. Uh, Kimberly as a uh, pediatric anesthesiologist and uh, Kirk as a cardiologist. And then just in their spare time, they run an international mission. Oh, I know. And, and you sit there and you go. No more Yellowstone for you this week. Oh, man. I am a wiggly worm, sir. And, and they're and, but but they're just happy. Like they're, they, you know, it, it, like if there's a testimony about, you know, somebody's faith and what they believe, it's the Milhones because they are the happy warriors. Like you talk to them and they're just like, yeah, you know, we just got to do what's right. And, you know, on and on and on. yeah, I know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we're we're really tired of what's going on politically. But, you know. You got to still, and, and, and you know, meanwhile, I'm like, burn them at the stake. Oh, your face turned red when you did that. Just yeah. lit up like brighter than our Christmas tree. That was yeah, pretty oh, impressive. That's, right. yeah, that's why God made life center. Let's check your blood pressure now. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's right. Better well, living through chemistry. Yes, we know that. We talked about that at the beginning of the show, you and your chemicals and how you love them. Well, we all have chemicals. We, we're, we actually, look. We are just a bag of chemicals. And whether or not you choose to titrate those chemicals in certain ways at times doesn't make me a bad person. My bag of chemicals doesn't consist of the same yeah, but, yeah. makeup as yours. It's just the way it goes. <laughs> it's just the way it goes. Yeah. Well, how are we celebrating this 100th episode? I won't call it anniversary because you'll make fun of me again. No, I'll make fun of you regardless. Uh, yes, that is true. You should understand that by now. Anyway, I will ignore you and tell everybody that we are doing a hundredth episode Impossible. contest giveaway on Instagram and Facebook. So follow us, BS for EMD on Instagram or Facebook or both. And then once you find the 100th uh, episode giveaway uh, post, you need to like it. That means put a little heart beside it. I will show you here in a moment for those of you watching the video. 
then when you like it, and it even says giveaway, we would like you to comment below and tell us your favorite episode just for fun. Uh, I can, but we will probably read them when we announce the winner. If you will tag a couple of your friends, and if you don't know how to tag, it really, for the people that on Instagram, it, it is at, and it's the same on Facebook. At and then you, you have you to add at, the person's and then you type name. their name in. It'll pop up in blue, and so like highlight them. At Bill Smith. Yeah. At Crash for Cash. So at BS Free MD. Somebody you like or somebody you don't like, so they <laughs> so they can find yeah, our if show. If you hate the episode, then tag people you don't like Correct. and punish them with our nonsense. And our social media manager then did number three rule was to screenshot that you follow our podcast and send us a message. So if you don't know how to do that, don't get too worried about it. It would be nice though. On the podcast platforms, Apple or Spotify or iHeart, wherever you're listening, you can follow us so that it pops up every week to remind you that there's a new episode. So if you're not following us on there, there is a little follow button. And if you take a picture on your camera and then send it to us in Facebook or Instagram, that's great. If you really struggle with that, it's a problem. No worries. We'll forgive you. But we just wanted to see that you're following us there as well. So you get reminders every week when the new show comes out. Are we talking about the and, and specifically what you win? Yes. Let's talk about what you win. So oh boy. we have some goodies. And the contest, unfortunately, is open to U.S. residents only we cannot mail internationally. It just gets too expensive. Although I'm thinking um, of doing a, I, won't, I shouldn't say runner up because there's a few prize items that we could well, send. Well, we've already put out on Instagram that the runner up prize is a bag of my leg hair. Yeah. So that right there explains why there are that limited explains, entries. That explains why you want to win. So and first not off, second. we do have a book from Dr. Peter Pregan, COVID-19, We Are the Prey. COVID-19 and the Global Pre Predators, and We Are the Prey. Sorry, yes, I got that wrong. Thanks for correcting me. And we are sending you, instead of our favorite Docktails with Cocktails beverage, because I said before we can't mail alcohol in the mail. Well, you can try. And believe me, I've done, I've done it and tried, and it doesn't end well. We are sending you two cups and our favorite brew from the Sisters Coffee Company that we drink every single day. It's fresh roasted beans, and I'm going to mail them to you along with the two cups, the book from Dr. Peter Bregan. We have a downloadable um, ebook from Dr. Yoho, which is Hormone Secrets. And I'm going to send an audible version of The Real Anthony Fauci by RFK Kennedy Jr., I guess it's not RFK Kennedy. It would be RF Kennedy Jr. Yeah, just Bobby Kennedy. <laughs> RF Ken RFK Kennedy is kind yeah, of yeah. a... Bobby Kennedy works just perfect. Repetition. We have an actual container of branch chain amino acids coming to you from Corey Lefkowitz of Redefining Strength, so you can get some strong guns like me. And, I... and you'll be able to pick your flavor, and then she shall ship them to you. Yes. Then we have a half an hour with the wonderful to look at Dr. Anthony Chafee, who is the plant free MD. He was on our podcast, and man, that was a super amazing fun in, one. In all of the to diet, to in talk. all of the diet and exercise episodes, that was the one that literally like took my brain out and put it in a frying pan and shoved it back in. Because I think. I think his I think he arguments won are club growing up. Yeah, I think his arguments are, arguments are the most being plant -free. Com compelling as far as the plant free, high protein, high fat. But he is a carnivore and he is giving away half an hour consultation to talk to him about carnivore lifestyle. All the questions you may have, even if you're not a carnivore, maybe you have some questions. So Want to do keto? Can I eat a whiff of thin mint? He's very sweet, super fun. And yes, if it's a wafer thin mint of meat, <laughs> must be a wafer thin mint of and meat. I think it's wonderful that he's taking a half hour of his time because he does consults all the time as a business. He's in Australia, and uh, so the the time difference it's not that bad. Make it work out. 
And then finally, on top of this is the big icing on the cake, which is a gut it microbiome is, it, analysis. It is shit icing, by the way, <laughs> but it is icing. You get to collect your poo and send it in to progenobiome, courtesy of Dr. Sabine Hazen, who is the gut microbiome uh, guru herself. And her lab will do a gut microbiome analysis and pretty much tell you what you're lacking, what needs to be worked on. And it really will give you some insights in, into your health. Well, it's, it's, and that is a and $870 that, dollar exactly. test. So that is a unbelievably generous gift from Sabine to us and from us to you because we care about your poo. So those are awesome prizes. I mean, well, and if they lose this, they're still up for the bag of leg hair. There you go. Bag of leg hair. Bag of leg Collecting hair. your poo. Who couldn't ask for better can't, prizes? Can't get better than that. Can't can't get it, honest. You know, maybe next time when we get to two hundred, I'll I'll move it all the way up to toenail clippings. I think you did that before and gave them to your nurse on her desk. Yeah, no, I'm yes, they them. weren't mine. Oh, that was the problem. That was even better. So the contest ends. We extended it because we were going to cut it short and announce it today, but to give people time to enter, it goes till midnight December sixth, midnight. Pacific Standard Time. So December 6th is when it ends. You still have time. And we will announce the winner December 8th podcast episode. So get your yes. name in there. If you don't want to do the stool analysis, you don't have to. But if you don't, tell us so we can give it to somebody who gives a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's a great test. Um, and um, what else can I say? Well, tag your friends and get them to yes, sign up as please. well. Free to enter. Pretty easy. I made it easy. If you really have trouble figuring out how to screenshot and send it to us, don't worry. You know, I just want to sum this up, bring it full circle. Uh, doing this podcast has absolutely changed our lives. I and did, uh, Can you believe we were at it? Hundred episodes. Yeah, no, but it is it, it like it Most has people quit. It, it has after. absolutely changed our lives. Like first, like yeah, you should see all the fighting that goes on behind the scenes before we start filming. No, it's not <laughs> fighting. Um, you lie, liar. So, um, no, but but like because of the podcast, we started interviewing people, diet and exercise stuff, and I was just like, man, I want to start running again. And I, you know, I can't. I got it, you know. So we interview Corey Lefkowitz and then we get trained by her and, you know, I'm down a solid 20 pounds and feel way better. And I'm able to, you know, there's a run out here out in the mountains where you can run around this lake and it's seven miles. And I thought I'd never be able to do that again. I can do that again. Why? It's because we actually listened to the people that we interviewed and we practiced what they said. And we have practiced what we preached, and it's made a huge difference. It's completely altered how I look at medical journals, how I practice medicine, all of those things. And, it, you know, it's opened our eyes to so many possibilities that there are so many really cool, amazing people out there. People that we can all learn from, from all walks of life. I mean, whether they're driving a car at 325 miles an hour or whether or not they're a, you know, Marnie Lynn, who's, you know, a female bodybuilder who got completely, utterly pissed off with the political system, never did anything political, and then started this big website to network people to try to, you know, save the country. Or it's Sabine, who literally is trying to save people's lives by having people understand the gut microbiome. Like it really, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's just been really, really rewarding and really life-changing for us and we that's our goal our goal is if you can get even 10 percent what we get out of doing this by listening then we'll have done our job so what we're going to do is we're going to collate these episodes more or less into all the episode numbers based on what we talked about like the COVID episodes the diet and exercise episodes um you know kind of the favorite big hitters like um you the know, ones I mentioned, you know, hormone secrets, et cetera, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. Right. So that people can go. If, it's like if you want to if you want to lose weight and you want to hear arguments for being a vegetarian, 
We got that. You want to hear arguments for being a carnivore? We got that. You want to hear, you know, how you should train? What does it mean to stay motivated, et cetera, which I think is nonsense because it's not about motivation. It's about ritual, but that's besides the point. Then you can listen to episodes with Corey or our friend Rocky Shorey, who like climbs five mountains in, in a week so and then eats like 25 large pizzas. Like you're just mind blowing stuff. Well, I was, I, and- I want to basically say that going forward, we love hearing from our listeners. We get, email from you all the time with suggestions critique comments which we really appreciate uh nothing is off limits we haven't got any super nasty hate mail yeah we've got some pretty nasty comments but it's all political right and you don't know if that's true but they're white right wing hacks we want to keep hearing from you it's the reason that we do this show because we can have these conversations at home by ourselves, which we do all the time People seem to like us sharing, chatting, and you uh, listening to our our ranting and rapport back and forth. So send us your suggestions for what you'd like to hear. Do you want to hear more COVID? Do you want to hear what's happening with that? Other illnesses? Do you want totally different topics, more health and wellness, more about us, more stories, of things we've seen, antics, etc.? So we appreciate you sending us ideas so that we know how to best make the show fit our listeners needs. That's why we're there. Absolutely. And so enter to win and we will announce on next week's show, the winner. And of course we will contact them and have it on social media, et cetera. I just want to say a couple other thank yous. We had some great sponsors over the past two years, which we really appreciate. And if you are a person that has a business or, you know, someone that you think would be a great fit to sponsor our podcast, Please reach out to us. We are always looking for yes, sponsors. To, like Zinn and Tito's. <laughs> of course. Those would be high level sponsors. Um, we would love to hear from anybody that would be. A Can you imagine how fun this would be? Zinn if we had a, if and, we no, had a nic- I'm not doing. If we had a nicotine if we had a nicotine and alcohol sponsor. Oh, that's just perfect. seriously like that would just be that would be the greatest thing. That would just be, think, I'd be, I'd be mopping away tears. <laughs> Maybe pajama ground and you can wear some pajamas. <laughs> Your face. Uh, oh, we, <laughs> we got to get, we got to hit Mike Lindell up. There for all you the go. Money. You know, my coffee, mm. my pillow, my you, sheets. My why not? Slippers, you already have my pillow. My, I'm waiting you for Mike. Mike. Look, Mike, come on. Throw me a bone. Bring out the my condom. I'm, I know you got it. I know you got it. I want to hear you bring it out. Are you going to try that out? No comment. Fast forward. So thanks to all our sponsors over the past year or two and our social media manager, Mitch Romancia, who's making our reels a little bit more fun and entertaining now that we don't have to do them. And by the way, if you want to get more of us, we are now on Rick Dancer's show, uh, Get Real with Rick Dancer, once a month, we'll be coming up on his show tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. And well, it will be yesterday it, when this airs. So <laughs> there we go. There you go. Oops. The magic of recording. Rewind that. But we are usually uh, on there weekly, just giving a little snippet of what's ahead on our podcast. Rick's got a great show featuring things happening in the Willamette Valley of Oregon and some things in Montana now that he's moved. But uh, thank you, Rick, for having us on and to all of our sponsors. But again, to all of our listeners, that you're the reason why we are here and we're at number 100 and still doing this. We can't wait to get to number 200. We hope you have a great week. Enter to win the contest. And as always, see you next week. It's no secret that medicine is a bit um, uptight. That's why Tim and I created BS Free MD to mix things up a little and have fun in the process. Besides, we are having these exact same discussions all the time, so we thought we might as well invite everyone to the party. If you really like us, you can get plenty more and maybe see one of Tim's cool tattoos on our Instagram or Facebook pages at BS Free MD. See you next time. Well, we try to keep BS Free MD as raw and real as possible. 
We can't be held responsible for any medical decisions or discussions had as a result of what you've heard on the show. We know. Bummer. But the truth is, we really do care about your questions. So feel free to reach out to us by email at doc at bsfreemd.com. 